Don't Use the Fifth Room Written by Stolen Faces Cabal For the record, I loved my grandfather. Growing up, he was always the one willing to watch me on the weekends or take me out somewhere fun. He was a phenomenal storyteller. He was the one who taught me to drive. He was even the one who bought me my first beer. So that's why I admit I'm an asshole for not wanting to take care of him now. I know it's selfish, and after all he had done for me growing up, it only seemed fair. I think my resentment came more from the fact that no one else in my family was in a situation to take care of him. Between myself, and a couple of deadbeat uncles and aunts, my own separated parents that I hadn't spoken to in years, the list of potential caretakers gets narrowed down really quick. Financially, I could take care of him although it meant life would be tight. With that in mind, I made a few moves to try to accommodate, to include transferring jobs and moving to a new town. That's why I bought the house. It made sense at the time. Plenty of space for my grandfather and I, fairly close to my work, and it was a steal for how the market was then. The house was old, built in the 60s. The architecture was wonky, and the floor plan was all over the place, and it just oozed the dumpster fire that was 60s interior decoration. We're talking shag carpets, a weird hodgepodge of vinyl and linoleum flooring, earth love wallpaper, the works. The upstairs was odd. When you reached the top of the staircase, you came to one end of a long hallway. Along the left side were four bedrooms. The first two were in pretty good condition. The last two looked like they had not been used or updated in 50 years. Along the walls between the doorways were floor-to-ceiling bookshelves filled with old books. The dust jackets read titles like Gulliver's Travels, Tom Sawyer, things like that. Not really my preferred genre, but I knew that was my grandfather's bread and butter, so I left them in case he wanted to read them. I took the first room as my own. I put my grandfather in the second. He wasn't infirmed, and he didn't have a problem with the stairs. Really, all he needed from me was tracking his daily pills. It was the usual elderly people cocktail. Sleeping pills, arthritis etc. But I figured I should still be next door in case he needed help. The third room I planned on turning into an office for myself, but it sort of just became a cluttered storage room for my old junk. The fourth I left empty. My grandfather liked to write. When I mentioned he was a phenomenal storyteller, that was because he did it for a living. He wrote books and even though many never got published, that never discouraged him from plugging away late at night on his obnoxiously loud typewriter. That's what he did all day, every day, while I was at work. I'd sometimes come up to his room when I got home, and only then would he realize what time it was. Money was tight, like I mentioned before, and soon after moving in, I got the bright idea to rent out a room. In fact, I didn't really need that office either, so I actually had two rooms for rent. I grabbed my stuff from the first room and managed to cram it all into the third. I figured I'd have an easier time renting out the nicer first room, which needed less work to be appealing. I got started with renovations soon after moving rooms. That's when I found the first warning. The first thing I did in the first room was pull up the old carpet. After only getting the first couple of square feet up, I found a message scratched into the wood underneath. The message was a warning, and it was written dozens and dozens of times into the flooring. Don't use the fifth room. 
What the fuck? Instinctively, I assumed it was just a prank. Honestly, I wouldn't put it past my younger self to do something similar in the name of some old-fashioned spookiness. Nevertheless, I decided not to tell my grandfather about it. The new carpet was installed, I painted the walls, and the room was done. I moved my grandfather into the fourth room. He volunteered. He didn't need a lot of space, and the second room would be easier to fix up and get a renter into more quickly. Once he was settled in the fourth, I began the same renovations I did with the first. That's when I saw the warning again. Don't use the fifth room. It was everywhere. That warning scratched frantically all over the flooring of the second room. The phrase overlapped itself over and over. And as I examined the marks, I got the sickening feeling that it had been done with fingernails. There were stains, too. Dark brown and all over. Alarmed, I ran into the hall and, like a child, I started at the first room and counted down the hall. One, two, three, four. Okay, I wasn't crazy. But because I was thoroughly freaked out, I went to the end of the hall by the fourth room. I could hear my grandfather in there, his typewriter chugging away. Like an idiot, I examined the wall adjacent to the fourth room's door, as if I'd magically find a door I somehow missed before. Of course, there was nothing. Huffing to myself, I again brushed it all away shaming myself for getting scared so easily. I covered the warnings and finished the second room. That night, I was woken up by thumping coming from the wall adjacent to the fourth room where my grandfather was sleeping. It was rhythmic and loud. I didn't hear his typewriter either, just a loud thump, thump, Thump. Thump. I got out of bed and went to his door. I called out first. Hey, Grandpa, is everything okay? Silence. Can I come in? Silence again. I hesitated for a second before cracking the door open. But when I looked in, I saw my grandfather lying in bed, asleep. His chest was rising and falling, and I could hear him snoring. I waited a moment, watching him, before I decided I'd go back to sleep. As soon as I laid back down, I heard his typewriter going off. I almost felt like he had timed it. It wasn't slow to start, too. I heard him typing furiously loud and chugging. I could hear him almost slamming the carriage in place over and over. I was afraid he was having some sort of insomnia-induced episode. I ran out of bed and started knocking frantically at his door. Still no response, so I tried to open the door. It was locked. Hey, Grandpa, uh, let me in. Come on, what's going on in there? Still met with only the abusive sounds of his typewriter. I tried the door again and again. Fuck. I wasn't a nurse, I didn't know how to deal with this shit. Grandpa was exceptionally healthy for someone his age. This didn't make sense. The keys to the room were somewhere downstairs. I ran down, also figuring I could grab his meds and find something that could help. I started fumbling around in kitchen drawers. That's when I heard a door slam and running feet. I jumped and turned, but then heard another door upstairs slam, followed by silence. This time I didn't call out, instead I decided to creep up the stairs slowly. 
When I got to the top, I was met only by the hall, pitch dark, and all the bedroom doors closed. Several of the books had fallen from the shelves and were scattered across the floor. One was laying at my feet. For some reason, I decided to pick it up and open it. The dust jacket had fallen off, but when I opened it, I realized it wasn't a book. The pages had no printed text, but were filled with a warning written over and over from top to bottom of every page. Don't use the fifth room. Don't use the fifth room. Don't use the fifth room. No fucking way. With a growing sense of dread, I grabbed another off the shelf, then another, and another. All were the same. Each one was in different handwriting, but all had the same message. Don't use the fifth room. 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 I placed the book back on the shelf and, with a sudden unexplainable weight on my ankles, I made my way down the hall. I tried each door, one after another. One, two, three, four. Each one was locked until I got to the fourth. The door opened without force and I stepped into the room. It was how it always looked, but my grandfather's typewriter looked like it had been beaten to death. Sheets and sheets of paper were piled high next to it, and one was still on the paper rest. A request this time, repeated across the page. Let me out. It was written over and over on hundreds of pages piled on his desk. I wondered how long it had taken him to do this, all those nights of hearing him typing. A rock hit the pit of my stomach as a realization came over me. I grabbed the shag carpet at the edge of the floor and pulled. The old stitchings tore from the tack strips with ease, and underneath I saw the same request crisscrossing, repeated over and over, scratched into the floor with feverish claw marks. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. Fuck this, I thought. I had to find my grandfather. I stepped out into the hall and tried all the doors again. All were still locked. After getting to the first and finding it still locked, I pounded my fist on the door. Damn it, Grandpa, let me in. There's some crazy shit going on and I've got to get us out of here. A book on the shelf to my left fell and landed on the floor with the pages open. Don't use the fifth room. 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 I looked at the shelf and saw the books packed into it. So many warnings. I grabbed another book and pulled it down, then another and another, letting them fall to the ground, their cryptic warning yelling at me to not do something I hadn't done. I know I didn't use the fifth room, but that's when I saw it. After pulling more and more books off the shelf, I could finally see behind the shelf to the wall behind it, only it wasn't a wall. It was a door. A door to the actual first room. Fuck. Fuck. I turned and counted. Again, like a child, never wanting to be incorrect so badly as I did then. Five rooms. I counted them another three times. The page
panic set in, the rock in my stomach turning into a knot coiling around itself over and over. I pulled the shelf away from the wall until I made a gap wide enough for the door to open. The doorknob turned. It wasn't locked and revealed a room covered in dust. It looked barely used. I heard another door slam. I turned and looked down the hall, barely able to make out my grandfather in the dark, standing there, staring. Grandpa? Hey, where were you? Are you okay? Silence. Come on, some crazy shit is going on. I don't know what, but we need to get out of here, now. He stepped towards me. I still couldn't make him out clearly, but his hands glistened in the dark, and they were dripping onto the floor, making dark stains in the wood. Grandpa. What? He ran, straight at me. I barely had time to think before I felt an impossibly strong vice-like grip wrap around my neck and shut the air off to my lungs completely. Between the dark, the panic, and the lack of air, I could barely see anything. And I swear that must be the reason why his face looked the way it did. His features were there, but strained like he was fighting with every muscle in his body. Then there were his eyes. They were gone. Not like they had been torn out, or, or bloody wounds. Where his eyes were, there were now black holes, surrounded by scratches. It looked as though something had clawed and scratched its way into his eyes, but with no blood and no torn flesh, leaving just dark caverns behind. That was all I saw before I felt myself lifted into the air and carried down the hall. My breath was cut off absolutely, and I couldn't see any more, but I knew where he was taking me. I kicked and punched, but had no effect, and in the dark it felt like he was eight feet tall. I felt a stop in front of the fifth room, still clinging to consciousness. I could hear him open the door with his other hand and walk in. In the dark, he just stood there. And I must have passed out for a moment, because in the pitch darkness, indistinguishable from unconsciousness, I heard voices. So many voices, whispering the same thing, almost as if they were speaking directly into my ears. Let me out, 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 let me out. Consciousness rushed back into my head, and the rush hurt so bad I had to squint. I looked up, realizing my grandfather had loosened his grip. His non-eyes were squeezed shut in pain, and he was shaking his head back and forth, as if trying to throw something off. Finally, he stopped and opened his eyes. They were there again, but his face was still strained in pain. He looked at me, then without warning, shoved me out the door into the hall. Lock the door. That was the last thing he said before he slammed the door shut. I heard a titanic crash, as if some massive object slammed into the door on the other side. I fumbled for the key in my pocket, hands shaking as I locked the door as quickly as I could. I heard more slamming, and I swear I heard multiple voices on the other side, all screaming to be let out. As I backed away from the door, the voices and the slamming stopped and were replaced with one sound. Thump, thump, thump. 
I spent the next three days in a motel room on the other side of town. I didn't leave once, hating myself for not trying to get my grandfather out and leaving him behind. Simultaneously hating myself further for not going back for him. I couldn't even bring myself to call the cops. What would I say? Nothing made sense or was believable. I'd sound like a crackhead more than anything else. On the third day, I finally went back. The house was unchanged, exactly how I left it. When I went inside, I stood at the door for a minute, somehow thinking I would hear another door slam or running feet, but no, just silent. I went upstairs and everything was right where they had been left that night. The doors were all open and the first three rooms were exactly how I had left them. All was the same, except for the books. They had all been meticulously placed back on the shelves and the real first room had been covered back up. And then the fifth room. The fifth room was empty. All my grandfather's belongings were gone. The carpet I had pulled up was put back in place. His typewriter, the papers, everything. There was even a layer of dust on the floor. I decided not to walk through the door. I shut it and left the house. Grandpa, if somehow you're alive and reading this, I'm so sorry for what happened. I've thought about this for a while now and I know what I have to do. I stopped by the gas station on the way here and I'm currently standing outside the house with 12 gallons worth of gas cans in my truck. I hope this will permanently fix whatever it is that's wrong with this house. But as I stand here now, I somehow get the feeling I'm not the first person to have stood here, thinking they can burn this house down and the fifth room for good. If I leave after this, and somehow someone else comes across this house like nothing happened, I just have one piece of advice. Don't use the fifth room. Okay, well, thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's story, and uh, huge props to the author for writing such a creepy horror story. If you liked the episode, please subscribe or follow for more, and uh, if you'd like to support the channel, I would really appreciate it if you check out my Patreon link in the description, or check out the merch store as well. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at ClancyPasta, and I will talk to you all later. Have a good night. Cheers.